in the preceding verses before our selected biblical text for today, Jesus hears the news about the death of John the Baptist. When Jesus heard what had happened to John, he withdrew privately by boat along with his disciples to a solitary place. Jesus has been engaged in the teaching ministry, the healing ministry, and the deliverance ministry to those who were oppressed by the devil. My brothers and sisters, real ministry is hard work. It can take its toll on you physically, mentally, and spiritually. You would not know that unless you engage in real ministry. Though Jesus was totally God in the flesh, he was also totally man. And as a man, Jesus was challenged with the same struggles that we struggle with in our humanity. Jesus and his disciples experience just like we do moments of weariness. So in order to try to get a break from the constant press of the people, Jesus suggests to his disciples that they move or relocate to a solitary place to get some well-needed rest. Well, somehow, the word got out to the crowd that Jesus and his disciples were relocating. And so the crowds decided to go ahead of Jesus to the solitary place that he and his disciples had chosen. The Bible tells us when Jesus landed at the solitary place, guess who was waiting for him? The crowd. Matter of fact, the Bible says that it was not just a regular crowd, it was a large crowd. Now remember that Jesus and his disciples were initially relocating to get some rest. But the Bible says that when Jesus saw the crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. And you know what, New Providence and friends? I am so glad that we serve a compassionate Savior. I'm glad that Jesus did not respond like some of us would have. Some of us would have said when we saw the crowd, don't you bother me. This is my day off. Leave me alone. But Jesus chose the right attitude. He allowed what was in him to come out of him. He was full of compassion. 
And I want to ask you a question this morning, and the question is this. How compassionate are you toward meeting the needs of others? All right. All right, preacher. Now, I know that here at New Providence Baptist Church, we have a missions ministry who is moved and motivated by the compassion of Jesus Christ. If you are ever around the church when missions ministry is being engaged, you would be amazed at all the stuff they do. Breaking regular trips to the Food Bank of North Carolina, making regular trips, the food line, picking up bread items and other items, going to other businesses to be a blessing to the crowds who come here the second and third Saturdays. And guess what? We are even blessed on the second and third Sundays because of their ministry efforts. That lets me know, New Providence, that we have a ministry filled with people with the compassion of Christ. In the text, Jesus identified that the need was great, and he, because of his compassion, responded to the need. And let me remind you that as long as we live here on this side of glory, well, there's always going to be the sick, well, always going to be the hungry, yeah. always going to be the poor, yeah. always going to be the hurting, yeah. and the lonely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But as believers in Christ, we must always be ready to show compassion to broken humanity. Well, the Bible says that as evening approached, the disciples came to Jesus and said, this is a remote place. And Jesus is getting late. In the evening, send the crowds away mm -hmm. so they can go to the villages and buy themselves something to eat. Now, later on in the text, it is revealed to us how many people made up the crowd that followed Jesus. The Bible says that there were 5,000 men besides women and children that made up this large crowd. Now, the disciples knew that they did not have enough provisions for a 5,000 plus crowd. They knew that in the boat that they used to cross over to the solitary place, that they did not carry enough food for 5,000 plus people. Matter of fact, they did not carry enough food for themselves. Jesus tells them, don't send the crowd away. Uh -huh. You give them something to eat. Uh -huh. Can you imagine the look on the disciples' faces? <laughs> the disciples probably looked at the crowd, then looked at Jesus, then looked back at the crowd, and then looked back at Jesus. They were puzzled because of 
Jesus' words. Now remember, there were 12 disciples and Jesus, if we look at minimal numbers, and Jesus tells them, y'all feed the crowd. <laughs> Twelve disciples and Jesus. He says, feed the crowd. Hear their response. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. Twelve disciples plus Jesus. But all they had was five loaves and they didn't have enough for themselves. They said to Jesus, we only have five loaves of bread and two fish. In other words, the disciples were saying to Jesus, we don't have enough resources to do what you are asking us to do. Jesus, we only have five loaves and two fish. Now, no providence. Don't you think that Jesus knew what resources they have. That's right. That's right. That's right. If he knows everything, then he knew what resources they had. Uh -huh. That's right. But sometimes, New Providence, Jesus allows us to face overwhelming situations to see how we will respond to his word. Jesus tells them, you give them something to eat. But you know the disciples. The disciples had made the computations in their head without taking Jesus into consideration. Remember, remember in New Providence that Jesus' disciples were made up of all kinds of different people. But there were some who were great at crunching the numbers. No doubt. Matthew, the one-time tax collector, probably was trying to figure out the ration of food to the amount of people divided by the amount of time necessary for distribution. And after much computation, according to Matthew, the numbers didn't add up. Right. And the disciples felt that the task was too overwhelming uh -huh. for them to handle. That's up. That's up. But right. they temporarily lost sight That's up. Temporary. of who That's up. they were dealing with. Sometimes you and I may feel that the task that God has given to us to accomplish is too great. We may say to God, this is too much for us. But Jesus' response to us is take what I've given you and bring them to me. You think that you don't have enough to complete the task, but I have given you 
already more than enough. <laughs> and how many of you know when we put our resources into the hands of Jesus, he multiplies the resources no matter how small they are. Lean over and tell your neighbor, give your resources to Jesus. Well, what are the lessons that we learned from this text, this text this morning? First lesson, New Province, that we learned is that we cannot measure our effectiveness by the size of our resource. That's right. That's right. That's right. Did y'all hear what I said? We cannot measure our effectiveness by the size of our resources. Some of us look at the blessings that God has given us and we see not enough. That's right. That's right. That's why some of us don't give like we supposed to. Okay. That's the reason why some of us don't tithe. Thank you. Because we measure everything by the size of our own resources. And we don't understand that when we put our resources in the hands of Jesus, that he can take the little and make much out of it. used to amaze me how, remember going to grandma's house, and you get to the closet and the cabinet and it looked like grandma didn't have nothing, but when it come time to eat, they had something. She took the little resources that she had and put them together. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. can't measure your effectiveness by the size of your resources because we serve a God who multiplies. That's the first lesson we learn from the text. And the second lesson is this. Know that when we give our resources to Jesus, he gives them back to us multiplied yeah, yeah, yeah. that we might be a blessing uh -huh. to others. Yeah, that's right. The disciples said to Jesus, all we have is five loaves and two fish. Uh -huh. Jesus says, bring them here to me. And he tells the people to sit down. Sat on the grass. Uh -huh. Jesus takes the five loaves and the two fish and he gives thanks. Uh -huh. Lord, have mercy. Yeah. Yeah. He gives thanks. Uh -huh. Tell your neighbor, he gave thanks. He gave thanks. He gave thanks. After giving thanks, what does he do? He gives back to his disciples the bread and the fish. And then the disciples distributed it among the people. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. 
Initially, uh -huh. the disciples had to give him the resources. Right. After they come from his hands, he gives them back to the disciples. And the disciples then give it to So also, all I'm trying to tell you is if we give the right resources to Jesus, he'll give them back to us, and then we can give them. And the final lesson <laughs> that we learn from this text is that when Jesus gives us back and we give back to others, there will always be more than enough to accomplish what his will is. The Bible said, now remember now, 5,000 Men, besides women and children, remember five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus breaks the bread and the fish and gives it to the disciples to give to the people. How many loaves? How many fish? How big was the crowd? But check out Jesus. I don't know how, I don't know Fred, I don't know Dr. Hagee, I don't know Mr. Felicia, I don't know if it was <laughs> Jesus breaking it and giving it to the disciples. I don't know if the bread and the fish multiplied when he put it in the disciples' hands. All I know is that a miracle happened. You might have, Lord, have mercy, a miracle in your own hands and don't even know it. And maybe if some of us would learn how to give, we'll watch miracles manifest right before our eyes. The Bible says, check this out, y'all. Check this out. We serve an awesome God. He took five loaves of bread and two fish and fed 5,000 plus. But that's not the crazy part. That's right. That's right. The crazy part is the Bible said, Everybody ate and was satisfied. Now some of us takes us a little bit more to get satisfied than others. But the Bible said everybody ate and was satisfied. And Dickens, after everybody was satisfied, somebody said, what's these fragments all over the place? That's right. 
That's right, boy. Yes, sir. That's right. All these leftovers. Uh-huh. Pick them up, pick them up, pick them up. Uh-huh. Pick them up. Uh-huh. And the Bible says that when they picked up that which remained, uh-huh. that there were 12 uh-huh. basket full, not, not half baskets, uh-huh. basket fulls uh-huh. of fragments. Uh-huh. Tell your neighbor, more than enough. I serve a God. Who has the power to take the little and make more than enough to meet all of our needs. New Providence, keep on giving. Keep on sowing in the ministry. Keep on sowing into world missions. Keep on sowing into local missions. Because the God who we serve, when he looks at our giving, he says, I can trust them with my resources. And if I can trust them with my resources, I'm going to open the window of heaven, continue to pour out blessings, because I know that they're going to bless somebody else. Keep on mission ministry. I know that sometimes you get tired. Sometimes I know you get weak. But keep on keeping on. Keep the compassion of Christ in your heart. Keep reaching out to broken humanity. And God will use you to continue to be a blessing to this world and when it's all over y'all do know that we ain't here to stay but when it's all over he'll look at you and say well done thou good and faithful servant anybody want to hear him say well done I, I, I just want to hear, you know, you may never pat me on my back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Folk may never come up to you and say, we appreciate what you've done. Yes, but only if I can hear him say, yes, well done. Well done. <laughs> you fed the hungry, you clothed the naked. You visited those who were sick and those in prison. You helped where others would not help. You sacrificed when others would not sacrifice. Well done. Well done. My children, may the peace of God and the blessings and favor of God continue to rest upon you as you go about the ministry of doing missions here on this earth. God bless you. Stand to your feet all over the church. Thank you, Lord, for being a God who gives us more than enough. 